Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be doing a little bit of wood turning with some electronics and we're going to be making a steady hand game. So a wire and loop type game, if you touch the track a buzzer will go off and a light. Now we're going to be wood turning the base from a piece of pine and then the electronics itself are on a PCB, printed circuit board and they come from a company called Kitronics. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to buy the kits. But they're fantastic, really easy to solder up, and it's a great project to do with your children or grandchildren over the Christmas period. So I hope you enjoy this one. So the soldering itself is pretty easy, and Kitronics have fantastic instructions to go along with the, the kits, and you can't really go wrong if you follow it. So what we're going to start off doing then is marking up a centre point for a hole we're going to need to drill to attach this to the lathe. So I'm just using a centre finding jig I made a while back. Let's go a couple of lines on there. Where all those lines sort of intersect into the middle is going to give us our centre point. Use the pillar drill to drill a little hole in this. So we can then use that hole to put over our pin jaws. Expand the jaws outwards. Give it a pull to make sure it's securely on there. And we're good to go. Here's the sort of shavings we're getting off this piece. Now keep these because it's coming up to Christmas and if you've got hampers you're making up for your family they're ideal in the bottom of the hampers. We might make those as another project maybe. So here's the finished piece. So a nice sort of grain pattern on this and what I'm going to do just to accentuate this grain pattern is use my favourite technique of using the blowtorch to scorch it, wire brush it back and we may even put a wood dye over the top of this. So we've got a fairly smooth wire brush and we're going to be brushing backwards and forwards in the direction of the grain and that's going to give us this lovely texture pattern. That's pretty cool. So the surface we're going to wood dye, we're just going to rub down to get all the messy bits off. So any bits of sort of charcoal-y bits left over. If you've got an air compressor as well, you can give a blow over with an air compressor. It's good, so you can see the dirty bits we don't want those in the piece and we're going to be using a spirit stain sort of blue wood dye fiddy's the brand really like these ones so you get a lovely color coming through <laughs> it smells good as well right we're going to put it over the top tiny bit at a time with this we can add it on gradually now it's going to look quite dark when we first put it on but as it dries it looks really, really nice. Almost gives you like a, a metallic look to it, which is really cool. So again, we're going to rub this in the direction of the grains. Sometimes you get tricky bits tapping it, so dabbing it will get into those tricky bits. And hopefully when this dries, it'll give us a, a rich sort of wavy pattern I'm going to go for, almost like sea waves. So you can see the sort of metallic effect we're, we're getting, almost like an electric blue coming through with this. So we're going to let that dry for a little bit. And we can come back and what I'm going to do, just to sort of brand this steady hand game, is I'm going to be drilling in a, a little hole that's going to take my logo disc on the inside. Then we can turn this round, hold it by that little hole on the pin jaws. And we can start hollowing out the inside of the steady hand game. So the way we're going to remount this, again using this hole 
with the pin jaws and the way I'm going to cover that up is using my logo disc. Now I get a lot of questions about these logo discs. I actually make these myself. So I've designed it on a CAD package and I send it to a CNC laser cutter to cut out these little discs. So if you didn't have a laser cutter you could easily use like a rubber stamp and Zazzle is a good company for stamps. You can use pin badges. I know some people uh, use pin badges to put in the bottom of bowls or even leather. Um, Jim Ovalton's really good. He's got a leather stamp and he uses those in the, the bottom of his bowls as well. So we're going to flip this round, turn the inside out now. So we're going to square up the bottom, create a shoulder where we're going to be putting like a plywood piece in a bit and hollow out the centre. So I've created a 3mm groove into the piece and that's going to be my shoulder, my screws and things are going to be going into. Now I'm going to do that 10mm across and then on the inside of this I can start hollowing all of this out, keeping that little shoulder. As you can probably see, I've had a bit of an oops moment, <laughs> lost concentration and turned right through into the, the bottom holder. Now the way I could have avoided that is drilling a hole to the depth I needed to and turning down to that hole's depth or even using a depth gauge, which I've got, which I should have done. But just to show you, I could have edited this out, but I wanted to show you that everyone makes mistakes, <laughs> especially me. And here we have it. So an easy way of covering that up, we're going to be using the logo disc over the top anyway and luckily that sort of fixes the problem. When that's glued in place you wouldn't even see it from the top and I'll blend that in with a bit of sandpaper on the bottom when it's all set. So not a disa complete disaster but not ideal either. So here we go, we're going to cut the plywood disc out next. So the inside lip we've created, in this case it's 15 centimetres or just under 6 inches in diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of plywood, some hardwood plywood, to create a little circle. There we have it. So we're going to trim that out now on the bandsaw. If you didn't have a bandsaw, you could use a coping saw to do this. So we're going to do a test fit. Nice, that's good. Now another way I thought of doing this is you could double side sticky tape a bit of plywood to a scrap block connected to the lathe and part it off with a part until you should get a perfectly round piece that way uh, rather than using the bandsaw but it seems to work quite well. So we're going to glue the logo in now then we can start drilling some holes to attach this little plate to the bottom and if you'll notice I've left a little gap then at the top and that's so that any screws I have, so if they're not flush to the surface completely, they're not going to make this rock on the on the tabletop. Just put some Gorilla Glue in there, and we're going to put that off to one side to dry. Now, the track itself. We've got this metal wire that's going to become the, the track that goes around. And what I wanted it to be is a Welsh sort of dragon shape. Uh, so I've drawn out the best Welsh dragon I could. I've had to adapt the tail slightly because I couldn't think of a way to make the curly tail work in the design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pin nails all around this and we're going to use it like a jig so we can bend our wire around. Now this is an optional sort of step, you could bend whatever shape you want but this is just a way of getting a, an accurate sort of shape hopefully. So we've got them all finished off. So it's a little bit of a special looking dragon, but uh, it'll do the job. Next step then, we're going to drill two holes to take these wires into the base. And we're going to do that to the same width as the wire. So 
going to also drill a 5.5 millimeter hole for the LED and a 7.5 millimeter hole for the switch six millimeter hole wand wire to come through now we're going to start attaching all the components into these little holes first thing we're going to do is put the track through the smaller holes and we can bend that back then that'll stop it from coming out on this one we're going to need to solder it now on the board we've got two holes left over uh, the loop holes so we're going to need to put the track into one of these and then the wire and the loop into the other one so to make it a little bit easier sort of leave the the long length on this one and we'll trim it off afterwards now the soldering itself is pretty easy thankful to work for lending me their soldering iron i've got my goggles on and i'm going to apply a little bit of solder to the tip to flex it and you want to be leaving at least a thumb's length with the solder in front of you save you burning yourself and uh, we're just going to feed in the solder i'm looking for like a dome type shape on the solder it's like a volcano and i know i've attached it effectively then right the next thing we're going to attach to the board is the wire loop and for this we've got a another bit of wire we're going to need to cut all these little brand strands then we twist them together like so and we're going to put that into the other side of the loop track now, so after soldering this wire on we're going to thread that through the six millimeter hole then we're going to put the led through the 5.5 millimeter hole and you'll notice by braiding the wires together it'll make a neater job and we've also got the switch to go through i've taken the the top off the switch to make it easier to push push through the hole and we've got on the other side of the switch a little spring washer and net to put on do that from the other side in a second so just to neaten up some of these wires and make sure the components aren't going to fall out we're going to be using some hot melt glue a glue blob over the led that should just hold it securely into place you don't want to touch this glue with your hands, obviously hot being the keyword, you're going to burn yourself. So I just quickly drill three holes and countersink them. I've got these little tiny, whoop, tiny, tiny screws to, to go in. And they're self-tapping screws. So I'm going to put this board over the top. And I should be able to screw these in place. So we've got the track all sorted. So we're going to need to do the loop next, so the bit that's going to be going around the track. So I've just got a large 12 diameter drill bit and I'm going to be wrapping that round there to make a little simple loop. So I'm just going to quickly turn a handle for this I think. So I've just drilled a angled countersink hole in there. And that should allow us to thread the, the wire for the loop through quite nicely. We're going to solder that loop wire onto the loop. Just blow that soldering joint. Pull this up now. And you can see how that little countersink hole. Blob of hot, hot milk glue again in there. Blob of glue in the end. And what that will do is it will just hold it securely in place. So it won't be wobbling as you can see at the moment. So here we have it, a steady hand game. Had a go at playing it. <laughs> it. Turns out my hand's not so steady. It's a bit like me sending Morse code playing this thing. But uh, quite quite a fun project overall. So zoom in on the base again. So we've got like almost like a metallic blue coming through with that wood dye. It's the logo on the top. LED that goes off and the reset switch. So quite happy with this overall. Really fun project. And I'm sure it's going to be hours of fun playing this as well so i hope you've really enjoyed tonight's project and if you are gonna do this project with your uh, children or grandchildren it'd be great to 
to hear that in the comments below. So if you've enjoyed tonight's project, please consider supporting me and subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below, as that really helps me out in getting more videos like this your way. So I hope you have a great night. Diolch nosta.